Welcome to hour number two of the Gary Sutton Show here on a Tuesday morning. Hope you're having a great day so far, and the sun's out, and the weather's going to be a little warmer. The snow, a little bit of snow we got over last night, uh, melted away pretty quickly. Be careful a little bit out there. You still have some icy spots, though. But, uh, you know, one of the questions in this hour is going to be, why only 5% of the population finds success? Now, I guess success can be defined differently for everyone, but... Uh, you know, there are different kinds of people out there. And we're going to find out from our next guest this morning, Rick Ruiz, exactly about those different kinds of people and what they're doing or not doing. Rick is a uh, was a deputy program manager on a billion-dollar program for a Fortune 100 company, managing a nationwide operation with a workforce of 15,000 people. Now he's president of the Positive Psyche Business Corp in Washington, D.C. They train and consult, and he's an inventor. He's a writer. Rick is the author of the action guide, Wisher, Washer, Wishy-Washy, Wisher, washer, wishy-washy, how to move from just existing to personal abundance. And Rick joins us this morning here on the Gary Sutton Show. I had to say that twice, Rich, Rich because it's uh, it just it, it's one of those things that just kind of catches your eye, and that did me yesterday. And welcome to the show this morning. Uh, good morning. It's a pleasure. Rick, uh, you, you've written this book, Wisher, Washer, Wishy-Washy, and you, you say that only 5% of the population finds success. That's not necessarily about just money, is it? No, it isn't. Uh, to each individual, uh, success is uh, defined uh, totally different. You know, for a lot of us out there, we say, okay, um, one of the things that you're trying to do, I know, is you're trying to get people into maybe that 5%, which obviously would make it a lot larger, uh, who wants to attain phenomenal excess. Um, and you say there are other people out there that lead lives of quiet desperation. What what happens there? What What's causing that? Well, I... I think uh, something that I've discovered in my career is that there's three types of people, and we all go through these phases. Uh, we start off um, as children. We are fearless. We want to explore. We want to conquer. We, we we learn to walk. Uh, we fall down a hundred times. It doesn't matter. We just keep going, and eventually uh, we succeed. But somewhere along the line, we start to allow society and people and friends and family to, to define who we are, and we start to uh, uh, suppress our uh, ability and desire to really take some risk. So one of the things that I found is that uh, we're, we're all wishers. We're, we're looking into the future. Right. Uh, I wish that this will uh, you know, happen for me. I can get this good grade. I can get this uh, house. I can get this promotion. But we don't really commit and do what we need to do to, to achieve it. And then later on in life, uh, as, the, as weeks, years go by, we end up looking back with regret, and we, we, we wish we had done this, and we wish we had done that. So those, that's where the wisher came in. Uh, there are people that do go out there, they try a little of this, they try a little of that, they, they flip-flop around. They don't achieve as much success as they possibly could, and that's where the wishy-washy comes in. And the people that really achieve something, that go out there and say, I want to achieve this no matter what it takes. I'm going to carve the Grand Canyon, for example. I'm going to go wash away those obstacles that are going to be in my way. Those are what I call the washers, and those are the people that achieve phenomenal success. You know, the wishers, there's a lot of people out there, we're looking at the lottery right now. It's up to, what, $400 million or whatever it is right now. And, and people say, oh... I gotta get my money in. I, I I gotta make sure I'm in that. And and they wish, and then they plan, and then at the end when they're disappointed because you know all but one or two are gonna are gonna lose, uh, they say, "Geez, uh, I'm depressed." Uh, you know, wishers. I, I I read somewhere one time where someone said, "You become what you think about," uh, and that is success. You become what you think about because you'll do the things that you have to do to become what you think about. Do you subscribe to that at all? Absolutely. Uh, that statement originated with uh, Earl Nightingale and also uh, Napoleon Hill. Absolutely. You, you become what you think about. You know, there is an element of luck in, in life, uh, where we're born, what culture, what environment, uh, what upbringing we have. There is that element of luck. So uh, we can't discount that. But there, are, if you look at the successful people in life, they have had to overcome tremendous uh, adversity, at least the vast majority of them. And they were not given the silver spoon. They just went out there and said, how can I make this happen? And that's what my book is about. It's a story uh, that I think all readers, all listeners could, can, can relate to. And then I give real stories of real people, obviously, that uh, have overcome adversity to achieve the success that they, that they uh, uh 
they enjoy. A good example in the book is uh, Colonel Sanders. Uh, we may think, we all know him as a Kentucky Fried Chicken. Right. Uh, yes, he's around, and, you know, boy, I wish I could have been him. But uh, most of your listeners may not know that he actually started his pursuit at the age of 65. He didn't have really anything to his name. He grew up from a very humble beginning, um, never even completed school. But at 65, with a $105 check, he started hitting the road to go and sell an idea for recipe. And after a 1,008 no's of people saying thank you but no thank you and laughing at him, he, he finds somebody that says yes. And he ends up uh, starting the franchise that uh, you and I know today. Rick, I don't want to get into politics on this, but there is a an element of people in this country today who are pushing this idea of inequality between those who have achieved and those who think that they deserve to have part of that achievement. Uh, and and a lot of us bristle at that because everybody says, well, they got their wealth by this or that or whatever, or they got their success by this or that or the other, but they really didn't do much to get it. And there is one example right there, and I suspect we can come up with hundreds of examples of people just like that who, there's a commercial on TV right now about things that started in a garage, you know, like Microsoft or, or, or you know, Steve Jobs developing something that, that people come up with ideas or about a Thomas Edison who, you know, failed a thousand times and figured out how the light bulb worked. And they said, well, you failed a thousand times. And no, I just figured out a thousand ways in which it doesn't work, I'll find the one that does. Um, how do we how do we reconcile that today in our country where we have this, uh, in our government to some degree, pushing this idea of, well, you know, you, you really can't achieve a whole lot, so stay where you are and, and you'll just kind of exist, as opposed to someone who's really pushing out there and trying to make something of themselves and make something of, you know, for the country as well. Well, I, I do think that there's a, a balance that has to be achieved because uh, folks do need some sustenance and they, they need to be able to have some foundation on which to launch from. Uh, the challenge is that a lot of people think that, that it, it is owed to me. It is It becomes a, a sense of entitlement that, you know, I wasn't born in, on the right side of the tracks or I didn't have the right kind of experiences or exposure, so therefore you, you, need, to, you need to continue to provide for me. I, I, I'm a believer that there definitely should be a support mechanism in there. But that doesn't mean that we cannot go out there and achieve. And the challenge that I find with a lot of people is that they do have dreams of what they would like to achieve, what they uh, would like to pursue. But when they start sharing it with their family, their friends, uh, their co-workers, uh, they kind of get laughed at and they say, well, you know, that wasn't going to work. I guess that wasn't a very good idea and I'll kind of stop. So they they themselves end up uh, halting their, their progress. And if somehow we said, you know, I've got a really good idea, and I want to go out and I'm going to pursue it, and I may be sharing it, and maybe they don't capture my vision, or maybe I need to hone or fine-tune my, my product or my idea, whatever the case may be, I'm just going to go out there. But when I get to the end of my life, I'm going to be able to look back and say, I did my very best, and ideally I shot for the stars and I achieved, you know, got to the moon, but I I am never going to look back in my life and say, man, I wish I had done that. And yet at the same time, we hear story after story after story of people who said, you know, I got dealt a pretty bad hand here in life. I, you know, I got, uh, you know, I, I, I'm in a bad place. Uh, my parents broke up, whatever it might be. You know, I was number 23 out of 23 of kids in the house, barely got enough dinner. And yet there are people that say, okay, the heck with that. Here's where I want to go. How do I get there? Let me go find out how I do that. And then you go. And the other part you mentioned was about we need to give people sustenance. So I, I agree with you. There are people that need to be helped. But do you do you get, I mean, shouldn't we be helping them to start to be washers? Shouldn't we help them to say, okay, here's how you do this. Here's how you go about it. Here's what you've got to do to get there if you truly want to be that, right? Absolutely, and that's one of the things that I do when I speak at schools, because uh, today in our educational system we say, well, you know, we, we didn't have the best technology in our school, we didn't have uh, the best infrastructure, and, and maybe it's the teachers, and yes, all those things are important, but the motivation that we bring to the table speaks volumes. If you look at Abraham Lincoln and how he started, oh, yeah. he had nothing, but yet he had an incredible motivation. We look at Benjamin Franklin, he was the 17th child in his family, and yet he achieved tremendous success. It doesn't matter necessarily what the foundation you have in terms of the money, the infrastructure, the environment, the culture. It's what you have between your ears. It's your mindset. And if we could somehow instill in our youth and instill in our people that 
when you have a mindset that is positive, and going back to what you said, what the, what you believe you can achieve, you can actually start to move mountains. You know, you talk in your book about the three Ps. Let's get at those a little bit, because if you use those, they're going to really help you along the way. Right, absolutely. Um, the the three Ps, uh, it, when you get, it, invest perspiration and uh, uh uh, perseverance, and all of a sudden I'm uh, losing track on the on the last. Well, topic. persistence and perspiration and passion. I mean, you better have passion right. for what you what you want, right? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, and Napoleon Hill said uh, he went and uh, interviewed uh, uh, 500 of the most successful people uh, early in the century, and he identified 13 attributes of the most successful people, regardless of what um, uh, industry they were in. And one of the things that he he came out with, he says these people had a burning desire to go and achieve what they what they wanted to to achieve. They have that passion. And when you look around and you, you see people, you know, they say, "I want to be a runner," or "I want to," uh, I, I think I'd like to do this, I'd like to do that. Well, that's nice that you want to do that, but let's take it to the next level and let's really develop that burning desire to go off and do it and be able to look back with pride and say, you know, I did achieve it. We're talking with Rick Ruiz, who's the author of Wisher, Washer, Wishy Washy. You know, one of the great examples you point out is Michael Jordan. Now, Michael Jordan, in my book, and I've, I've been a basketball coach for 38 years, so I have a little bit of a heart tug there, but I often tell people when I speak at clinics and I speak at camps and so forth that Michael Jordan lives in the top of the penthouse and everybody else is at least 13 floors below. Uh, that there's no one that was like him. And yet here's a guy that was cut from his high school basketball team when he was, what, a sophomore? And, and you know, first of all, how'd you like to be the coach of that and, and say, yeah, I'm the one to cut him and say, well, get back to your village because they're missing the idiot. But, but point being, he wasn't as good a basketball player then as he might have been, and yet that didn't stop him. He had a particular dream, and he became the greatest basketball player of all time. Right. He didn't uh, allow other people to define him. He had a passion, he had a drive, and he went off and did it. One of his quotes is, I know fear is an obstacle for some people, but it is an illusion to me. Failure always made me try harder next time. And that's what made him the, the, the great... Uh, basketball player that he is today. I'm not much for talking during a basketball game as a player, but Michael Jordan, they say during the NBA, would go over to a player, and you'd see him many times standing next to a player with his hands on his knees, the other player's there, and he's talking to him, and he said, you know, I don't mean to make you feel bad tonight, but there's no way you're going to win. He says, I'm going to try harder than you, I'm going to work harder than you, and so you're going to have to work harder than me, and that's impossible. I mean, he would say stuff like that to people, and you go, oh, man, here's a guy that has a dream and wants the ball in the most drastic moment of the game because you know he's going to make something happen. And how many times do we see that over and over and over again just in his particular area, which was basketball? Right. You know, the key word that you say there is work harder. Uh, many people feel that uh, they have to have that that magic, uh, um, you know, do I have the talent? And if it isn't there, well, maybe I should just wait until I find something that really is my calling. Um, there was a great book uh, written by Bob Richards many, many years ago called uh, The Heart of a Champion. Right. And it was about Olympic athletes. And I was just a Founded to find out that the Olympic athletes that I admired were people that really didn't even have the talent initially, and they got in it to build their strength and then became fantastic weightlifters, pole vaulters, swimmers. Uh, but they didn't have that innate uh, talent in initially, but because they invested of themselves, they became very good at, w at something and then became, uh, you know, heroes to many. You know, as we watch the Olympics right now, we're hearing story after story of varied ways in which people made it to these things and, and how they became so good. When we come back, Rick, I want to ask you the question about the mathematical formula that can help you determine your success potential and how to move from just existing to personal abundance in the long run, no matter how you define personal abundance. We'll come back with Rick Weeze. He's written a book called Wisher Washer Wishy Washy. That's exactly right. And uh, you can find it out there at www.wisherwasher.com. We'll be back with Rick Ruiz with more right after this on the Gary Sutton Show on WSBA. Welcome back to the Gary Sutton Show with Rick Ruiz, excuse me, who is the president of a Positive Psyche Biz Group, uh, Corp, actually, a Washington, D.C. training and consulting firm. He's also the author of Wisher Washer, Wishy Washy, How to Move from Just Existing to Personal Abundance. Rick, uh, and this was something I thought was really interesting. You talk about a mathematical formula that could actually help you to determine your success potential. How do you do that? Well, um, it started off with... Uh, 
uh, studying uh, the, the the great leaders of our past. And one of the interesting things that uh, I learned from Edison, you mentioned him earlier in the show, right. is he he said to increase your success potential, you need to double your failure rate. And I was always amazed by that. I didn't quite understand it when I first heard it. But as I've gone through and I've studied uh, successful people and what they've done, and, and even companies for that matter, I was able to synthesize the uh, uh, um, success potential down into a mathematical formula. And everything in, in, in life, our universe, is, is, is based on mathematics. And here I, I really uh, uh, feel that I found uh, the, the magic formula. And it's basically this. You take what your you you compile a listing of what your innate attributes are. You you may be strong. You may be tall. You may be you know how to play the piano. Uh, there may be some uh, innate attributes that you have. Then there's some acquired attributes that you have. And again, I use the the example. Of, uh, play the piano there, that's something you acquire in time. So what are your innate attributes? What are you born with? What skills do you have? Uh, what, and then what have you acquired in time? And then do you know how to use technology? You factor that in, and I, I show you how to do that on my formula. And a key, key parameter is what is your mental attitude? If you have a positive mental attitude, it's gonna, your success rate is going to be far better than if you're just ho-hum or you have a negative attitude. And I show you how that works with my formula. Even on my website, uh, it's uh, uh, the algebra is all done for you. And then how many people do you know? Because you need to be able to network in today's day and age. And all of that is gets divided by the, um, basically how many times you fail at what you're trying to achieve. Uh, it's a little more complex than that. You look at your number of tries and your number of failures, but the bottom line is how many times are you failing to, to achieve what you want to do. And then you multiply that times the 5% that you mentioned at the start of your show, and that will give you a, a success potential. And the key thing is, as you play around with the formula, you'll start to see that the more times you fail at whatever you're trying to do, but you get up and go again, uh, you're going to see that your success potential increases dramatically. Wow. That's kind of interesting. I, I never thought about that, but the statement that you made, too, um, to reach success potential, you have to double your failure rate. Never thought about that. And I guess when you're doing that, you're also really upgrading your idea of persistence, right, which is one of the things you talked about in the beginning. That's correct. I mean, you talk about Michael Jordan. How many times did he fail to make the, the shot? But nonetheless, got up. How many times, you know, you started off with being cut from the basketball team. But you know what? I'm going to get up and I'm going to go at it again. And I'm going to go at it again. And I'm going to go at it again. Same thing happens with baseball players. Same thing happens with uh, Olympic athletes. They try at something and they fail. Yes, they do. But they get up and they don't allow the the uh, ho-hum uh, naysayers uh, to discourage them. They just go and this is what they have to do for themselves. And they keep going. And before you know it, they end up proving us all wrong and, and we really look up to them and rick a uh, final minute here your, your final thought how to get people just uh, who are just kind of existing or maybe wishing they'd have done something or having regrets about their lives or something what would you tell them to get started at uh, step one the first step is to really as a as self-realization i am a wisher i can't tell you how many uh, readers i've had that come to me and say you know Rick, I, I, I realize I'm a wisher. I, I gotta move from that. So when I have that realization, I can say, you know, I've gotta get out of the, get off the dime here and go off and do something. I can go and do it. And that's what I do in my book. I have an action guide in the back, which actually says, let me, get give you some templates on how you can inventory your skills and where you want to go and create a roadmap to where you want to go. Great stuff. Where can people get the book, Rick? You can get it on Amazon or on my website, wisherwasher.com or beawasher.com. Uh, Wisher Washer, Wishy Washy is the name of the book out there. Please check it out, if you, especially if you're just kind of existing and you want to move in the right direction. Some great ideas there. Rick, really enjoyed having you with us this morning. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure, Gary. Thank you, you take care and have a great day. Rick Ruiz with us this morning. The name again is uh, Wisher Washer, Wishy Washy. And the idea is to become a washer, a doer, a, a person that, that succeeds. Uh, by the way, you can go to www.wisherwasher.com and find the book. Read up one if you'd like.